reaching out to people, people with blindness who are outcasts from society, who no one else wanted to be around. He stepped out into their worlds, you know, even people with leprosy, highly contagious disease. He went there because of the compassion and love he had. He broke people. a lot of rules too, didn't he? Cheers, Richard. I've never had a coffee with a footy umpire before. I've only ever sworn at him. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like umpiring AFL footy? Uh, it was exciting. I really enjoyed it. So uh, I loved being out there on the footy field and being a part of it with the footballers. And uh, it was just a, a great time, great you experience. You must have copped a bit of abuse, though. Yes, that was one thing I really didn't enjoy about the job, so <laughs> is the abuse. Do you, do you hear the like the individual spectators, or you, can you hear the stuff? Look, you don't actually hear that much on the, from the spectators. It's just one big dull roar. But the players, yeah, you definitely do, because they get frustrated at times, and it's very individualised comments at you. So Did they yeah. swear at you? Oh, yes, they, they can swear at me. So, um, yeah, they use all sorts of words, and particularly even words like even uh, Jesus and Christ. Mm. Mm. I have a story, a true story, about a young lad who was hearing the Christmas story for the first time. And he said to his teacher, Miss, why would Mary call her son after a swear word? Like the only <laughs> context he must have heard the name Jesus Christ in was yeah. you know, dad swearing at yeah. home. And I, I guess that's a bit like, well, you think, you know, 2000 years ago, the name of Jesus was, was around. Today, the name of Jesus is around. That's a pretty long time for it to, to have kept on going. And for me, I guess it was Jesus was this, you know, the, almost like a fairy tale type, you know, like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You'd, you'd have Jesus as, as one of these stories. It was this, this, I guess, concept of a person, you know. So is he historical? Well, there's lots of evidence that Jesus actually existed, lots of historical evidence, a lot of stories written by his followers or even people that just lived during that time have written a lot of historical accounts about Jesus. And so not just the Bible? No, not just the Bible, lots of different accounts. And there's even, there's just as much evidence that Jesus existed as there are to a lot of other historical figures. Mm. Even the main faiths, like the Muslim faith and the Jewish faith, uh, they believe that Jesus existed. They might believe in a different interpretation on who he is, but there are accounts that they, yeah, they believe that he existed as well. Yeah, that, that was never a problem for me to believe that Jesus existed. Mm -hmm. But for me, there was no connection between his existence and mine. So I saw him as an historical figure, not as a fairy mm. tale, but an historical figure around whom a lot of mythology had been built. So there was a real person called Jesus somewhere, but that the church lived by myths and legends. And those myths and legends were used to keep people under control or to mm. get money off them or something very cynically. So how did that change for mm. you? Well, the thing that changed for me was meeting people for whom Jesus not just was, but is. Like I met people who had a deep mm. personal relationship with him. And so they, what, what evidence gave you that impression that they believed in Jesus or had this wonderful personal relationship with them? You could see it just yeah. in their relationships, in their joy, yeah. um, in the way in which they prayed to him and spoke of him. Yes. It was a real connection. They read the Bible and in that reading of the Bible, they understood that Jesus was speaking to them, with them. Uh, I'd never come across anything mm. like that before. He was not just a figure in history, but a real figure active in their lives now. Uh, it blew me away, confronted me dreadfully with my sort of historical view of him, now seeing this real person in action in the lives yeah. of others. I feel a bit the same, that the people that I notice now, like that, are, that some of my friends, they have this real connection with this person, Jesus. It's part of their lives. They, they you know, it's part of their whole family life. It's, it's their centre. And, and for me, who grew up as, you know, going to church and, and Sunday school and where Jesus is up in the clouds somewhere, you know, this, this entity that's not really connected with you, to suddenly now, I guess, discovering my own journey of Christianity and, and, well, not even Christianity, but that, that whole connection with Jesus. He's not up in the clouds. He's much closer. I don't know that I fully have that understanding of our of relationship with him yet, but it's certainly in the journey of it and certainly, um, you know, trying to have that, that connection with him and, and, and so talk how, to him. How, how have people, um, what, what encouragement or advice have people given you 
I guess it's, um, you know, people used to tell me, read the Bible, you know, that's God's word. And, and I just thought, you know, I don't really need to read the Bible. I know the Bible stories. I know those sorts of things. But this year, for the first time, I actually did do um, a Bible study. And for me, it just sort of all seemed to connect and click. And, and um, since doing that, I can actually see the character of Jesus, well, the character of God in terms of um, what kind of a person he was, what kind of things he did, what kind of um, responses he gave to people. And he seems a lot more real now that I'm actually, you know, drilling down into into this this well, Bible. And that's what it was like for me like in terms of Jesus becoming real, was reading those stories about him, uh, reaching out to people, people with blindness who are outcasts from society, who no one else wanted to be around. Mm -hmm. He stepped out into their worlds, you know, even people with leprosy, highly contagious disease. He went there because of the compassion and love yeah, he had he for people. He broke a lot of rules too, didn't he? True. And, and that for me is really important, the fact that he, you know, he did things when he wasn't supposed to. He healed people he wasn't supposed to heal. You know, he didn't just follow the set of rules that that you know um the religion had in in those times you know he he's not the institutionalized religion that you know that you get caught up in he he for me is real he's he's the, he lives and works and was a human like we are and had the same issues and and that for me is is a what makes it him i guess seem fairly close and connected yeah, he's a person a real person that cares for real people he's not a, an abstract uh, person or an idea mm. or a fairy tale or just mm. an historical figure. He's a, a real person that cared for people and yeah. loved and had compassion. And for me, you know, reading that story and account of him going to the cross and dying yeah. on the cross just opened my eyes up to yeah. not just who he was back then, but who he is now. And, and I so, think that's a really important thing when you're trying mm. to get to understand who is Jesus. It's not just this you know, trying to describe Jesus. It's who he is for us and, mm. and, and a personal thing. And, that's and the not promises an, he has. Yeah, and it's not an easy thing to come to because, as I said, I'm, I'm still on that journey. But I see him in other people mm. and, I, and that's what I want. Mm. It's interesting before, when you were speaking about him, you used the word God and Jesus interchangeably. Mm. And I think that's really significant because I've come to see that the Bible teaches us that in the face of Jesus, you see the face of God. I remember having a conversation mm. with a bloke on the plane once where you have all sorts of interesting conversations. <laughs> and he came to the position that he believed there probably was a God, mm. but we could never really know what that God was really like. Mm. And I said to him, have you ever considered Jesus? Because Jesus is God, become one of us. Jesus is God in human flesh and blood. So. If we need to know God, we need to know Jesus. Yeah. And, and when you look at it that way too, it's a, he, Jesus is an amazing person, but not just an amazing person, amazing God who loves us and is real uh, and for us and does make a difference in our lives. So, mm, Even for footy umpires. Even for footy umpires. <laughs> <laughs>